When a video game is canceled, it can be difficult to judge how it would have fared if history had gone differently. Most of the time, the public is only treated to a small snapshot of the title's content, some screenshots, a bit of canned footage, or maybe even a vertical slice or two. Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro's Silent Hills is no different. Like so many failed projects before it, Silent Hills remains little more than a concept, a dream in the minds of its fans and the people that were working on it. But on the road to its demise, it birthed one of the most celebrated horror experiences of the past decade, a playable teaser, or PT, that provided a sense of terror that was absent from so many of its predecessors and helped reinvest a generation of players in the macabre. Video game cancellations are tragic and leave the world wondering what could have been. But they can leave behind more than just ideas. They can impart tangible experiences that are great in and of themselves and serve as an impetus for change. This is the story of Silent Hills. In the early 2010s, horror games were suffering from an identity crisis. While small independent efforts such as Amnesia and Slender continued to provide chilling experiences, many of the genre's biggest franchises were becoming increasingly body and action-oriented, focused more on the thrill of killing than inducing a sense of dread. And few series exemplified this trend as intensely as Silent Hill. After a legendary heyday under Konami's Team Silent, Silent Hill had become characterized by clunky, combat-oriented outings like Silent Hill Downpour and Book of Memories. These titles had their merits, but they failed to provide players with the scares or psychological nuance that so strongly epitomized the series' early entries. Silent Hill was in dire need of a reboot, and in Konami's eyes, the best person capable of realizing such a title was Hideo Kojima. Kojima's involvement with the horror series had historically been limited. The Metal Gear Solid auteur and Team Silent had rubbed shoulders on occasion, with several members of the latter group joining Kojima's internal development studio, Kojima Productions, both before and after Team Silent's disbandment. Most notably, Kazuhide Nakazawa, the director of Silent Hill 3, and Suguru Mirakoshi, the director of Silent Hill 4, had both aided in the development of Metal Gear Solid 4. Outside of this, however, the two entities didn't cross over much. But Kojima still enjoyed the series as a fan and frequently expressed his appreciation of it. Short of Team Silent, Kojima was Konami's best bet at giving the franchise its proper due. He might not have worked on it, but he had enough love and knowledge of it to know what it needed to be to succeed and the design acumen to create it. As a result, Konami's president would ask him in 2012 to develop the next Silent Hill game. Initially, Kojima was tepid to follow through. Speaking to Eurogamer in September of that year, Kojima explained that as a self-professed scaredy-cat, he wasn't confident that he could develop such a title. Yet he also acknowledged that there existed a certain type of horror that only people like him who are easily scared can create. The fate of this unlikely project would remain elusive until August of 2014, when Sony announced and released PT onto the PlayStation 4 store in the middle of their Gamescom press conference. Billed as the world's first interactive teaser, Sony claimed that PT teased an unannounced horror project from the enigmatically named 7780 Studio. Players descended on the title in droves and quickly came away confounded. Rather than immediately divulge the nature of 7780's project, PT forced players to brave an infinitely looping hallway, one haunted by disturbing apparitions and esoteric puzzles. Many balked at its obtuseness, yet many more continued to chip away at it, and eventually, a determined Twitch streamer named Soapy Warpig completed its final trial and was greeted with a revelatory cutscene of a muscle-laden town. PT wasn't a new game from 7780 Studio, it was a teaser for Silent Hills, a new Silent Hill title starring Norman Reedus and directed by Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro. 
Kojima had a reputation for faking out the industry, having performed a similar stunt the year prior with Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, which he was also directing at the time. PT's deception had been elaborate, but it was par for the course with the auteur. Less ordinary were the other two names attached to it. Del Toro had previously bonded with Kojima over their shared love of geeky fiction, as well as their artistic ambitions. The two recognized a sort of creative kinship in each other, despite Del Toro's previous lack of success making games. While the Mexican filmmaker possessed a solid filmography, with critically acclaimed movies such as Hellboy and Pan's Labyrinth under his belt, he had only worked on two video game projects, both of which had been canceled. The experiences had left Del Toro shaken, but with Kojima at his side, he was ready to try once more. Meanwhile, Ritas had been a longtime colleague of Del Toro, having acted for the first time in the latter's 1997 film, Mimic. When Kojima expressed his interest in having the Walking Dead star appear in their game, Del Toro was able to quickly get him on board. Finally, in addition to these three individuals, as well as Kojima's production team within Konami, Del Toro would later reveal that Japanese horror manga artist Junji Ito was also involved with the project. Ito is renowned in Japan for his grotesque and twisted depiction of the macabre, with the subjects of his works frequently assailed by all manner of Lovecraftian body horror. While stylistically different from the creations of Team Silence Masahiro Ito, the horror manga cause work would have still fit right into the series universe. Silent Hills had all of the people it needed to succeed, and more importantly, a community to proselytize it. After PT's nature was revealed to the world, the project received an outpouring of support from across the industry, with many excited not just by the talent attached to it, but by how strong of an experience PT itself had been, where other contemporaneous experiences neutered their own atmosphere by giving their players ample opportunities to fight their supernatural menaces. PT left those intrepid enough to try it with no means of defending themselves. Players had no other option than to experience the game's uncanny horrors head-on, and thanks to the looping nature of the hallway, without any reassurance of being able to escape them. In one sweep, PT bulldozed concerns that the next Silent Hill game would again forego the psychological ambience that had so strongly characterized Team Silence works. Kojima and El Toro were returning the series to its roots. And while its puzzles remained a point of notoriety, the feverishness with which PT's community attempted to figure them out only helped bolster its reputation. As David Houghton of Games Raider noted, by spreading out into the real world, by forcing solutions by way of hearsay, internet whispers, and desperate rumored logic, PT became its own urban myth. Through PT, Silent Hill had escaped the confines of its digital simulacrum and invaded the real world. After giving the industry a month to breathe, Kojima debuted a new concept trailer for Silent Hills at the 2014 Tokyo Game Show. The trailer, which depicts another hallway infested with intense frights, was noted to not be representative of the final release. Likewise, when pressed for more specific details as to what the game would be like, Kojima didn't have much substance to offer. While the team was considering many different ideas, including releasing the game in an episodic format, nothing was decided. They weren't even sure whether the final product would be played in first person or third person. What was known was that everyone involved wanted to make a game that would make players scare themselves silly. Production of Silent Hills would likely only begin in rigor once Metal Gear Solid V released the following year. Until then, PT and the Tokyo Game Show trailer would have to tide fans over. Unfortunately, fans looking forward to the final product were in store for disappointment. In March of 2015, the internet became gripped with rumors that not all was well at Konami. Kojima's name had been removed from the Metal Gear Solid social media account and website, and according to a news release, no longer seemed to be an executive at the company. Fans optimistic that it might just be another elaborate ruse quickly soured when GameSpot released a report claiming that Kojima and Konami had experienced a falling out and that after Metal Gear Solid V was completed, he would leave the company. Concerns arose that Silent Hills might be dead in the water, and were further exacerbated when Del Toro and Ritas both claimed that the project wasn't happening in late April. Finally, after weeks of fevered speculation, Konami confirmed the day after Del Toro and Ritas's comments 
that Silent Hills was canceled. The news would be met with outrage and disappointment online. After being so thoroughly impressed by PT, discontinuing the project it was teasing felt nothing less than cruel. As if to make things worse, Konami announced in the same breath that it would also be removing PT from the PlayStation Store in a matter of days. This decision would also prove immensely unpopular. It was bad enough that the company was scrubbing a product that so many had enjoyed. But in an industry historically poor at preserving works from before the advent of digital distribution, the removal of a game from a digital storefront struck many as frustratingly tone deaf. In September, Konami would release Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain worldwide. The game would be showered with praise, but noted by many to feel incomplete, leading to speculation that Kojima and Konami's acrimony resulted in important content, including an additional bombastic ending, being unwillingly cut from it. True to earlier claims, Kojima would depart Konami shortly after, launching a new independent development studio, also named Kojima Productions, in his wake. While neither Kojima nor Konami have ever come forth and offered an official reason as to why their relationship broke down, evidence suggests that it was spurred by shifting focuses within Konami reaching their climax. Over the past several years, Konami has slowly left many of its properties by the wayside, abandoning treasured franchises like Castlevania, Suikoden, and Gradius in favor of shallow, yet lucrative mobile phone games. Where developing console games in Japan represented an increasingly costly and risky investment after the arrival of the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, mobile games were low risk and incredibly profitable, and Konami's management had become incensed by them, to the point that Konami CEO Hideki Hayakawa would state in May of 2015 that mobile is where the future of gaming lies. Someone like Kojima, renowned for creating big-budget AAA experiences for home consoles, simply no longer had a home within the company. In the cinema, you have beautiful indie games that are subtle, uh, that are poetic almost, you know? So it's, it's limitless. It's only limited by the bastards with the money. So, you know... Uh, Since Silent Hill's cancellation, Del Toro has remained fiery, going so far as to state in late 2016 that Konami's decision to axe it was one of the most nonsensical things he had ever witnessed. Kojima has been more diplomatic, stating that while P.T. and Silent Hill's ultimate fate left him feeling cold, he's thankful towards Konami. For the nearly 30 years that he was employed there, Konami provided him with opportunities few others experienced and made him into the person he is today. Moreover, Kojima could continue to collaborate with Ritas and Del Toro on future projects, a fact that he would triumphantly remind the world of upon announcing his first independent video game, Death Stranding at E3 2016. Meanwhile, PT would go on to become a massive source of influence on the horror genre, motivating many developers to try and mix its sublime sense of dread with unique frights of their own. The independent game scene in particular has been host to a wide variety of PT-inspired titles, such as 2016's Layers of Fear and projects like Allison Road and Visage. And in the AAA space, Resident Evil 7 returned its own series to a moodier, less action-intensive experience reminiscent of its earlier titles, much as how P.T. did the same to Silent Hill. While this shift in direction had actually been decided upon at Capcom before the release of P.T., one of the game's producers, Masashika Kawata, would state that horror fans' widespread approval of Kojima's title was immensely validating to the team's own decision to go back to basics. In the years following PT's removal from the PlayStation Store, many fans have attempted to preserve its legacy by remaking it illicitly for the PC. One such fan, a 17-year-old developer by the name of Kimsar, got extremely close to completing a remake in the Unreal Engine before being contacted by Konami in July of 2018 and told to take it down. While unfortunate, Kimsar would reveal that, according to the Konami employee he had spoken with, the remake had proven very popular within the company so much so that it had reignited a desire among many to start making legitimate games again. Kimsar's story is a sobering reminder that while it's easy to view Konami as being a singular evil entity intent on ruining or abandoning its properties, 
The reality of things is not so simple. Like most other video game companies, Konami is made up of numerous individuals, many of whom want nothing more than to do right by its heritage. The decision to shelve Silent Hills was tragic, but it wasn't unanimous. There were undoubtedly many employees that felt this choice to be against the creative spirit that allowed Konami to become as popular as it once was. Yet this story is also a cause for hope, and another demonstration of PT's undying sway. That just as how it inspired other developers to develop experiences that harkened back to the horror genre's roots, PT may one day embolden Konami to let the spirit of creativity flourish within it again. Our documentaries are crowdfunded and made possible by the generous supporters backing us on Patreon. If you enjoy our content, consider subscribing to our channel and becoming a patron to help us create more. Thank you.